What's going on everyone? I'm Will with Profit Programmer. I'm here to help you build software and make money with it too. Now in today's video, I'm gonna give you five projects that every programmer should try. Let's get into that. All right, so this video is just kind of in response to, you know, all the other programming channels out there like Cal Halden and everyone else. And, you know, there is a couple that I'm probably stealing from them because, I mean, it does make sense that you probably should build those things out. But I have through a couple of others in the mix, so stay tuned to figure out which ones they are. So first is to build an API. Now, in order for you to build an API, you just choose a programming language. I mean, every programming language should have an HTTP library built inside of it. And then all you have to do is just use that library to build out your API, and then you'll also probably need a database. I do have some examples for you guys to choose from. Now, if you have some JavaScript knowledge, I highly recommend going into Node.js and then using Express.js with that. Express.js is basically just like a third party module built by someone else, but that is widely used by everyone within the community. And so you just import that into your Node.js application and then you build out your API from there. Or if you know Java, you can import a library called Jersey 2 and Jersey 2 basically gonna be the same thing as Express.js. You just build out a servlet and then you host that servlet on something like Tomcat where you'll be receiving requests and sending out responses. Or you can choose Golang. Golang is built for high concurrency uh, server applications. And so if you're wanting to build an API on top of Go, that'd probably be a really good option. It already has a like default HTTP library that is actually fairly well to get started with. Next is you can probably just use Ruby on Rails. Now Ruby on Rails kind of has that MVC architecture on it, but you can actually use it to your advantage and build out an API with that. Or with Python, if you're a Python developer, you probably already know this library, and you can use Django. And Django is just like the rest of them. It's an HTTP server library that you can use, and it's fairly easy to build up REST endpoints for your Python application. Number two is to use an API. Now, maybe before, maybe you haven't built an API yet. You know, maybe you wanna figure out how they work. So you probably wanna actually use one before you build one, right? So Go out there and try to use an API, and there's so many to choose from. I mean, there's like the YouTube API, the Twitter API. Three hours later. And then finally, the Yahoo Finance API. Number three is to build a game. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and build like a PS4 game or an Xbox One game, or to go out there and use Unity or some other like really high level game engine that you know you can write little to no code and actually make a game with. I actually want you to go out and figure out how you know writing to the canvas works, how to set up stages, how to set up screens, how to set up uh, sprites, and then how to you know manage your memory. So when you're not using a texture, maybe you want to delete it. So I'm just saying something simple, right? Like Snake or a dungeon crawler, or a platformer, or something like Flappy Birdie, right? I just want you to build something, you know, that's fairly simple, something that wouldn't take a lot of, you know, logic to build. There's very little physics behind it. It's just collision, and maybe you're worried, you're dealing with like a really basic, you know, top-down gravity. Now, lucky for you, there are plenty of game engine libraries out there for you for each programming language but there's a few that I would recommend that I've already dealt with. Now, one of the game frameworks that I would personally choose from is called Love2D. Love2D is built on top of Lua, and if you don't really know Lua, I, you know, I don't blame you. It's not the most popular language. I think it should be. It doesn't get a lot of love. I figure that's why they call it Love2D. Now, if you don't know Lua, it's fairly simple and it's kind of like python and javascript i mean the syntax you know the syntax is a little bit different but it's very similar to those two scripting languages now if you're actually going to go with love 2d you can actually put it on mobile and desktop android ios mac os windows and linux speaking with doing cross-platform on mobile and desktop you can actually use Java with libgdx, and libgdx is something that I've used for a bunch of small personal projects. I've never put anything out on the store with it, but it is actually a fairly low level uh, game engine framework for you to build games with in Java. Now, if you know JavaScript, you can use Phaser, and Phaser is a popular 
game engine framework. Uh, it's mainly for built for web first, but I believe that you can port out the game to Android or iOS. And you can also put this game from Phaser onto Facebook Instant Games. So if you want to create something for a Facebook game, you can use Phaser in JavaScript to do that. And the last one I would probably choose is Pygame, just because you know Python is a really popular language nowadays. And so if you're wanting to create a game and you know Python, you can use Pygame. All right, number four is to build a full stack web application. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with building an API because it's going to be fairly the same process. You're just going to need to choose a programming language, find an HTTP library for that programming language, and then you'll probably need a database, and then you'll probably want to get a UI framework. Now, there's already some software stacks out there. I don't know if you've ever heard of LAMP. LAMP is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. There is also MEAN, so MEAN is MongoDB. Express.js, AngularJS, and Node.js. Third, this one kinda isn't a software stack, but it's called Meteor, and Meteor is basically just an abstraction layer on top of the mean stack. And there's also Django for Python. Now, Django is just gonna be the back part of your web application to do your front end. Like I said before, you'll need to pick a database, a UI framework, and then once you get all those three things, then you're good to go. But if you're wanting to build out a web application in an MVC format, then look no further to use Ruby on Rails. It's fairly simple to create a full stack application. And number five for my list, and this is gonna be quite different from everyone else, is to build a Chrome extension. It's actually fairly simple to create a Chrome extension. I mean, all you have to do is create a folder, create a manifest file. Within that manifest file, you just say, I'm gonna be using this JavaScript file, and then that's it. And then you, all you have to do is just go up to Chrome, click on settings, extensions, and then load unpacked extension, and then go find that folder that you created, and then you, you will be able to see your Chrome extension in action. Now there is quite a bit more that goes into building a Chrome extension, like if you're wanting to build a little pop-up window, or maybe you're wanting to do some back-end processes that you know does something a little bit more heavy, you will have to learn the Chrome extension API, but the Chrome extension API is really well documented, and all you have to do is just run through the documentation, figure out what you're wanting to do, and then go and build it. All right, and now that is my five projects every programmer should try. Now, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing giving this video a thumbs up if you liked it, a dislike if you disliked it, leave a comment below, tell me how exactly I'm doing. Now, if, you're, if you don't really know any programming, I would highly recommend going to one of my playlists uh, that I have built to choose your first programming language that you're gonna be using. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one, bye.